Hi, my name is Rock Santos, co-founder of Q Swimwear, and I am a swimmer. We've created a swim brand by swimmers, for swimmers, for all swimmers. Even you, Sally Sava. Yeah, you know who you are, sit in the back of the practice, all practice long, till the last one on the last set, when you swim by all of us, post the fastest time of the day, and get all the coaches' attention. Q Swimwear, a brand for all swimmers, even you, Sally, save up. Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Monday, December 13th, 2010. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Phoenix Monitor today, we'll talk to Matt Grievers, the reigning 100-back Olympic silver medalist. Just tore it up at the U.S. Short Course Nationals. Matt joins us right now in the Phoenix Monitor from his home in Tucson. Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Pretty good meet there in Columbus. <laughs> yeah, I felt pretty pretty good about it. Which swim were you most pleased with? The 100 free. I got to talk some trash to Nathan, and I finally got to back it up a bit. And uh, I just had a lot of confidence in that last day just from my previous swims, so I was just ready to go out there and swim fast. Was that your personal best? I think 41.5, was it? Yeah, 41.3, and yeah, that was my personal best by half a second, I mean, even with the suit, so yeah, it was really good for me. All right, what, is something clicking right now for you, or was just this, uh, you know, this is what we should expect from you? <laughs> uh, both, I think. This is what I'm starting to expect for myself, and something's definitely clicking. Rick DeMont and I have... Uh, kind of come up with a program very specific to my needs or what we think my needs are. Last season, um, I didn't have that great of a summer, and I think it was partly due because I didn't lift weights. So now I'm back to lifting weights and putting lots of power um, in my swimming, and I can, I can tell the difference. I just had so much easy speed. I mean, even that 100 freestyle went out 19.5 to my feet. But I didn't really try that hard. It was all natural, easy speed, and I didn't have any of that over the summer. So we're starting to figure some things out, and hopefully this is what I can start ex expecting for myself more was, often. Was there some sort of motivational factor to the not having a great summer, not making the either the Pan Pack or the World Championship team? Of course there was. Uh, Clark Burkle and I were both roommates, and we're both we're pretty sad <laughs> with how our summer went. And we said, you know, let's show people that we're still good. <laughs> people should still fear us. And it ended up working out well. We both had awesome swims. Actually, all of Tucson Ford swam extremely well. And, uh, yeah, it was to prove to ourselves that we're good, to prove to our coaches that we're still taking this seriously and proved our competition to, you know, don't count us out yet. You're going to have to kind of fly under the radar until Olympic trials. I mean, all the big meets are already booked up. I mean, next yeah. year, World Championships, you won't be able to go to that and swim against the best. You're going you're gonna to sort of be uh, shaving and tapering by yourself, so to speak. I mean, is that a unique thing for you? How do you, uh, how do you confront that challenge? I mean, it is a challenge. I definitely uh, would have liked to be able to go to bigger meets, and uh, it kind of stinks that one, you know, one week of bad swimming can kind of ruin over a year of big meets, but uh, I think, I think, yeah, I'll just shave and taper at little meets, like you said, and just try to do my best. I think my training now is where it needs to be, and uh, I'm really excited about it, and I'll try to make those meets, those smaller meets, mean a little more to me. Uh, that's what I did this past weekend. I put a little extra pressure on myself, and though all the competition wasn't there, I was still able to perform the way I wanted to, and uh, I mean, I think I'll be able to do that at other meets too. When you know all the big dogs aren't there, I can still make it important. What events do you think you will swim at the Olympic trials? Um, I don't know. I, I keep trying to find new events, but I don't know why. I've been working breaststroke to maybe get my IM back, and uh, breaststroke's fun and all, but there's just it's tough to do a lot of events and not get tired for me. I think I'm not as young as I once was in college. Uh, I could swim to where I am and go do an event right away. NCAAs, you know, you're swimming 
uh, three events in one session, possibly six events in a day, and I'm just not able to do it anymore. So I don't. I think I'm just going to do the 50, 100 free, 100 back, maybe 100 fly, and maybe the 200 back. But the, the 100 fly, 200 back are definitely question marks right now. Okay, so 50, 100 free, 100 back, mark you down, maybe a fourth or fifth event, but not exactly leaning that way. Right. I mean, especially with the, I'm doing less yardage now. I'm doing a lot more power, and uh, I do have a ton of easy speed, a lot of top end speed. I just don't have that endurance, and uh, I'm not just saying to finish a race. I think I have the endurance to finish finish a race, but just by the end of the weekend, I get pretty tired. <laughs> yeah. That 100 backstroke is really where you made your, your name in 2008. You got the silver. Uh, it's going to be a pretty crowded field, I expect, in 2012. I mean, do you, do you think Lochte and Phelps will swim that, or do you think they'll lead, you know, prefer the longer events? I think, uh, I think, you know, it's open for them, but as soon as they start seeing our 100 backstroke times, they're going to veer away. I think by the end... A lot of people are coming up and between, you know, Pearsall, Thoman, now Plummer, uh, myself. I mean, backstroke's always been a very deep field for the U.S. And uh, if we start throwing down some good times by, you know, 2012 trials, they'll probably stay away from it. But if one of us or all of us are kind of lagging, uh, both Phelps and Lockyer are more than able to uh, take that spot. I wonder if you guys had dive-in starts if your 4x100 backstroke relay could beat, could go top 8 in the 400 free relay. <laughs> That's a good question. That'd be fun to find out. <laughs> that sounds like a made-for-TV event that Swimming World TV <laughs> should put together. I agree. I'll... Well, Matt, it was good to see you smoking in the water again. That was some good stuff at Columbus. But uh, we're going to miss you at some of the big long course meets next year. Yeah, thanks, Peter. No, I'd... Oh, may, well, I don't want to say hopefully someone gets injured. That sounds horrible. <laughs> but I'm uh, more than ready to step in a spot if need be. All right. Hey, uh, before we go, it's almost Christmas time. We know you're a big video game guy. Uh, what should be on the uh, – what's on your wish list or what should people be buying for their kids these days? <laughs> Not video games. It can ruin <laughs> your life. It's addicting. Uh, get them the painting products and start being an artist. No, I don't know. Video games – Cataclysm just came out. That's the new uh, World of Warcraft expansion. But like I said, that stuff can be time-consuming. How much time? How much time a day would you say you play video games? Honestly, I, I don't want to say it. I, <laughs> I don't want it recorded. <laughs> I, I play a lot of video games. It can range from you know just like an hour to hanging out, or if I'm really into it, you know, I could play eight hours in a day. <laughs> uh, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kids, that is your Olympic silver medalist in the 100 backstroke right there. <laughs> Greenmers, thanks a lot for joining us, buddy. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Good, good talking to you. All right, that's Matt Greenmers joining us in the Venice monitor. He's got to go play some video games. I'm Peter Bush reminding you all to keep your head down at the finish.